Hey guys, what's going on dudes? It is David here. We are back with another video. Now in this video guys, we shall be discussing the biggest news from the Atlanta Falcons that happened yesterday. And that is the Atlanta Falcons have released Dante Fowler Jr. from the team. Dante Fowler Jr., the number three overall pick in the 2015 first round draft by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tore his ACL before the season even began. Didn't really live up to expectation in Jacksonville. Then he went to the Rams. Didn't really, he had, he got a little bit better with the Rams. And so when the Falcons picked him up, and I think it was 2019, I, I myself, I myself was expecting big things from Dante Fowler Jr. But in the two seasons that he has been at Atlanta Falcons, it's been disappointment from the four, former Florida Gators. And I hate to say that because, like I said, he's a Florida Gators boy. I'm a Florida Gators fan, and I hate to see this. I really hate to see this from a Florida Gator not playing that well. We all, we had one that was really good for us, and that was Keanu O'Neal, and then we let him go in free agency. I'm, bruh, we, I don't even think that the Falcons have a Florida Gators player on their team anymore. I think Dante was really the last Florida Gators player there, and that's... Thinking about that, it's just like, there's no Florida Gators players on the Atlanta Falcons. So, I mean, I'm a Falcons fan in general, but at least I had two teams to represent when it came to the Atlanta Falcons when Dante Fowler Jr. was there with the Florida Gators and the Atlanta Falcons, but that is completely over. Now, when it comes to Grady Jarrett's, sorry, not Grady Jarrett's, Dante Fowler Jr.'s contract in general, I wrote a few notes here that I'm even talking about. He They restructured his contract in 2021. What does that mean? Well, in 2020, the 2020 to 2021 season, they restructured after the 2020 to 2021 season, they restructured his contract to the point where if they had cut him at that point, he would have cost them 29 million dead cap. But thankfully, they did not do that because that would have put them in a lot of trouble when it came to this free agency. And they had hoped that Dante was going to pick up from his rookie season as Atlanta Falcons, where he only picked up three sacks in, as, as his first year in Atlanta Falcons. And hey, I saw three sacks. I was like, Dante Fowler Jr. is going to prove this is his second year as Atlanta Falcons. It's going to be a better season. And then it turned out not to be a very good season for Dante and the Atlanta Falcons. Dante, had, Dante Fowler Jr. had one year remaining on his contract, which means he was going to play to the 2022-2023 NFL season, but unfortunately he does not. Now the Falcons have cut him. He played 14 games this season, started six, only 4.5 sacks. And the guy, the thing is, you probably look at that, and considering he led the team in sacks with 4.5 sacks, you probably look at that. That's good. But then you read the stat that the Falcons were last in sacks. And then you're like, so he led the team in sacks, and the team was last in sacks. That just that doesn't that doesn't go well. If we had been like mid tables and sacks and he led the team in sacks, then we probably wouldn't have cut him. But considering the fact that the Falcons were not generating enough pressure on the quarterback and Dante Fowler Jr. only had four point five sacks in twenty twenty one. And he was he was playing so inconsistent. Some of the games he would be playing fifty percent possession on the defense, and then some of the games he blamed 40%. It was never really consistent when it came to the outside linebacker. And I just want to say this. I would not be playing Dante Fowler Jr. as an outside linebacker. I would be playing him as edge because I feel like that's going to be Dante Fowler Jr.'s best position on the edge because that gives him the best opportunity to go after the quarterback. Not an outside linebacker at the edge position. That's why when you have Aaron Donald, who's an edge rusher, he gets a lot of pressure and he gets a lot of sacks. If you put someone at outside linebacker, they're mostly there to put pressure on the quarterback, but they're also mostly there to try and intercept the ball. And I'm pretty sure Dante Fowler Jr. does not have that many interceptions when it comes to his career at the Atlanta Falcons. But in the 28 games that Dante Fowler Jr. has played for an for Atlanta Falcons, he has 59 tackles and 7.5 sacks. That is just disappointing to read. 59 tackles, 7.5 sacks. Three sacks in 2020, and 4.5 sacks in 2021. That is not good enough for the Atlanta Falcons, and that is why the Atlanta Falcons cut Dante Fowler Jr. yesterday, 
And that means the Atlanta Falcons shall be left with $4.6 in dead cap. But I think that's going to be a very... I think that's going to be able to be dealt with considering what we're about to do because we have a lot of players that we need to resign. And then there could be some players that are going to get their contract restructured. Matt Ryan, for instance, I'd probably restructure his contract. And then also Jake Matthews, who has who has a lot of salary cap going to him. So we could probably get that restructured and we can clear some cap space and we can basically already get rid of that $4.6 in dead cap to being back in the positive well, we technically are still in the positive. I think we're like eight million and eight million above the salary cap. So I think right there that's good. But then we can go back into twelve million, and then maybe we trade Calvin Ridley because I've heard three rumors about Calvin Ridley, and that'll be discussed in tomorrow's video. But then if we trade Calvin Ridley, that'll free up eleven point some million in cap space. We could possibly sign Foyce Lucum because that's going to be our number one priority to re-sign him. Foyesai Lukun because he was our number one defensive player and we can't we can't let Foyesai Lukun go anywhere else especially if he goes in the NFC South we cannot let them do that because then he was he's just going to torment us when it comes to next season but that's Foyesai Lukun Dante Fowler Jr.'s next team that he'll probably be likely to go with is the 49ers and if he's likely to go with the 49ers I just want to say this him along with those other pass rushers like Nick Bosa and the linebackers that they be playing, if the 49ers can possibly somehow get him back to what his true form was when he was selected at number three overall in the 2015 first round NFL draft, fair enough to Kyle Shannon and the 49ers, but I don't really think that's going to happen. So, unfortunately for Dante Fowler Jr., did not make his full three years as the Atlanta Falcons got cut yesterday, and that means the Falcons will most likely be drafting an edge position at the number eight overall pick for this year's 2022 NFL draft. But for that out of doubt, that's all my notes, guys. That's all that's all I have for this video. I will see you guys all next time with another video. Peace.